Hey guys, today I want to show you uh, the Frogger engine I was working on. Uh, it's pretty basic. Um, it's under 200 lines technically to remove the commenting. I'll go ahead and show you what the uh, the form looks like. Uh, it's pretty basic stuff right here. I went ahead and drew this in so you could visually see it. It's much easier to build this game uh, when you have something visually. Uh, what we have here though, in case you're wondering what that is, that's actually the form itself on the collar. Uh, Anyway, so what I've done to create the quote-unquote curb or the sidewalk is I've just kind of set the back collar to control, uh, but you could set that to, let's say, like a gray. Let's go ahead and go with that. That probably looks better anyway. I'll go ahead and save that. All right, so anyway, what we have here is our curb. Um, not much of a curb or a sidewalk or whatnot. Uh, here's the semis and the trucks. The reason why I did this is uh, if we went with a single image, uh, if you just clipped the end of that right in this section right here and not hitting this it would still think that you hit it so I went ahead and just made that two separate pieces and then obviously these are the cars well not obviously ha 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 um, and these move as well these all everything here moves on one timer uh, this right here is your first label these are two separate labels this is your game over label and it's hidden and this is your play again game over label and it's hidden as well this is all just picture boxes as you can see right here these are all just picture boxes this is a picture box this is a picture box so on and so forth uh, so yeah it's not fantastically art or anything uh, the water is a picture box as well it's just a single picture box these logs are individual picture boxes and this section right here is a picture box so basically all this is just picture boxes including your player of course the frog uh, so let's get into the code uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the movement first alright so the first thing we have here is we just we're not even using a timer uh, for the key press event because if you remember in the old Atari days it was kinda like a jump pause jump pause so what I've done with this is I basically made it go by click instead of using a traditional timer for movement we're just using a click event uh, so it's pretty easy to follow of course the only thing here that would be different that uh, was not related to the actual movement is when you press enter all this is doing this is only used when the game is over and you need to reset the game that's all this is used for. You just reset your position. Uh, it turns everything to, you know, visibility to false, and it turns the traffic timer back on. All right, so let's go ahead and close that up. We don't need to see that anymore. Next, here is the traffic. Now, this is pretty repetitive code. So once you understand this, you pretty much understand how everything works. All right, so what we have here is we have the trucks this is their movement okay and what I did in case you're wondering why this is negative 540 uh, that's the actual length of the truck so let's go look go in here properties uh, that's roughly the length uh, minus 9 of course uh, so that way it's just barely popping up you can just barely see the red before it repositions itself back over here okay so that's why that's there and that's checking against your X coordinate and your X remember goes left and right because that's the only thing it needs to check for alright and that's the cars pretty much the same concept the logs are a little weird well they're not weird they're the same concept basically it's just they go left and right as you can see there's their speeds are different like the car is much faster and the log is not as fast as the car but it's slightly faster than the truck as you can see and then at the bottom we have our collision detection now this timer is set to run on every 10 milliseconds and I'll go ahead and close this and I'll show you the timer so here's our traffic timer that actually invokes that it's enabled true right off the bat I'm sorry it goes every hundred milliseconds I'm sorry so 
every hundred milliseconds it's moving these vehicles moving these logs and it's doing a check for collision detection all right so let's go into our collision detection uh, what we have here is again repetitive code it's pretty basic this is pretty good though if uh, you ever want to know how to make this game in a very simple form of course uh, what we have here is it's checking your picture box frogger which is your frog it's checking to see if its bounds is intersecting with any of the trucks or the parts of the trucks alright so that's what's happening here the next part we're checking to see if your interact or your if your frogger intersects with any of the cars right, the next part is the water this one threw me off a little bit I am um, it probably I'd say it probably took me about a good hour to figure this one out myself um, because I was really close and I just really wasn't understanding it I wasn't wrapping my head around it completely so what we have here is we need to check to see if we're entering the water okay that's that's up here we need to make sure we need to do something if we're entering the water so once you enter the water it does it does a check did you intersect with row one logs this is row one logs else did you intersect with any of the logs on row two which would be the second row right here these logs and then finally it checks for row three did you intersect with any of row three logs if you didn't inter intersect with any of these logs and you're in the water then you've game over because you've hit the water and that's just how Frogger worked back in the day now the next thing it needs to check for is to see if you go off screen. All right, this is a pretty basic thing. We're checking your x value or your frog's x value to see if it's going negative one. Like so, if we go into here to our game engine screen and we check his current value, go into the properties and we'll check his x coordinate. His current location is six six two. Okay, so if he was to be anywhere about right, right there, anywhere over just anything below zero point zero then he's technically off the screen and game over the same thing for the width I'm checking the clients width on against the X so if your location if your froggers X value is greater than the clients rectangular width then you're off the screen or you're about ready to be off the screen basically so game over again the last thing it needs to do it needs to check to see if you actually win so it's checking to see if your bounds intersects with the PB ground 3 which is the picture box 3 ground which is this as you can see there's three sections of ground there's one two three so that's why this is picture ground three, picture box ground three. All right. So if you get over here, you win. Okay. So what happens when you win or lose and you want to reset? So here's our final timer that occurs. This is our game over timer. All right. Game over doesn't necessarily mean that you lose uh, because there is a ch it's checking the statement. All right. It's it's going to check. All right. So the game over timer. Let's see what we got over here. It says if win is false, this is if you lose. It's going to say game over. Press any, press enter to try again. So you need to press the enter key basically to reset the game. Um, and it's going to turn those labels to true. It's going to reset game, set that to true. Traffic timer is going to be stopped, and the game over timer is going to be turned on. So when this turns on, it turns this on. All right, and that just simply enables, or I'm sorry, just simply sets the color for the labels, and that's all it's doing, just giving a, a flash appearance. Same thing, just in reverse, of course, for game win equaling true. It says you're alive, just changes the text to you, you're alive from game over, and then this doesn't change. Um, so, and this becomes visible again. The label reset game is true. Turns off the traffic timer. Uh, game over obviously is enabled obviously there's a little bit of optimization that you can do to this game uh, but let's go ahead and play it and see what it looks like when we're playing it 
try to reposition this so you can see. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and win. Yay, we're alive. So we press enter. We're going to reset. Let's go ahead and get squashed by the truck. Oh, game over. Now, let's see what happens when we go into the water, because this was the fun part that took me forever to figure out. Oh, game over again. So, obviously not the best graphics. However, I probably would have killed for these graphics back when I was five years old and I got my first Atari uh, back in the 80s. So, this is Frogger. If you wanted to make like a retro version in Visual Basic, um, or whatever language you're working with. Uh, this one was made in Visual Basic, but you can pretty much probably make this in just about any language. So please post your comments on this game, whether you like it or not. Uh, any suggestions on how to optimize it, we're always welcome as well. All right, so thanks for watching.